What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 171 of the Games and Grants podcast. My name is Sunny and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. How's it going, Finn? It's going good, thank you. Yeah, very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm yeah. very good, thank you very much. Good. I'm, I'm enjoying the Biohazard t-shirt that you've got on. Today. Yes. I've been uh, hearing good things about the latest in Biohazard. Yeah, man, we're, we've gone Japanese today, That's we're, so we're saying the Japanese name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Biohazard. Which is a way better name, by the way. It is, isn't it? Resident, Resident Evil doesn't make a whole lot of sense, uh, especially with the latest games, which don't really take place in a residence. In a well, I suppose 7 does, but yeah. Yeah, 7 does, but, you know, the the 8th one is literally called Village. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think Bio- I've always thought that Biohazard was a cooler name, though. Yeah. It should be called Residence Evil, because there's multiple residents in the village. <laughs> <laughs> or just call it Biohazard. It was all that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, a, I don't know. It's, it's cool a cooler name. name. I've always thought that, though. I yeah. have always thought that. I agree. I'm looking yeah. forward to that, though, next week. Can't wait. Yeah, me too. We'll get, on, we'll get on to that, though. Yeah, we'll get there. I'm jumping the gun. Yeah. I'm jumping, we are, we're jumping we're the massively billy. jumping the gun. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping the Austin and Carlton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. shit puns, and we've only like we've been recording what a minute forty. <laughs> Love it. Jesus. That's what we're all about. Huh. Yeah, that's exactly what we're all about. We we we, we literally sort of we, just before we started recording, we were like, "Do we have much to talk about today?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> not a lot has happened." Yeah. We'll just dra- we'll, we'll 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 drag it out. <laughs> we did a pointless podcast a few weeks ago, and everyone like really enjoyed it. Yeah. So that's... if we do another pointless podcast, at least if we do a pointless podcast, the next one we do is usually like full of good stuff. Yeah. It's you know there's slow weeks and there's uh, there's uh, busy weeks. It happens to be a slow week, but that's fine. Yeah. We always that, that we always want to talk about. Absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we always we always manage to fill time, regardless exactly. of if there is or isn't anything to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I love about this podcast it's always something yeah that's it did your dad still listen to this podcast I think so as far as I know yeah it is always loves it number always, one fan yeah always just pretends oh yeah I, I listen to it yeah oh yeah what happened to it, <laughs> it just, oh you know you talk pretends. about wrestling games <laughs> ah, ah, it was a lucky guess <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well let's just let's just jump straight in what have you been playing yeah. uh, well indeed I've been, it's been a slow week I've been busy I've been busy, been busy working on the videos. Uh, I've been playing some uh, oh. WWE 2K uh, 23, which has been yeah, man. really fun. Yeah, what do you think to it? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, basically just an improved version of last year, which is definitely a good thing. Mm. Last year's is very good. This year's is even better. Um, so yeah. It's, it's more refined. Um, graphics somehow look even better. Um, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, literally just improved. Like my GM moves, uh, my GM mode has uh, improved. There's more matches, mm-hmm. more. Um, titles stuff yeah. like that um uh yeah i'm playing my faction which is still pretty much the same still probably the weakest mode in my opinion uh, yeah with the cards and still there's only one online mode which is like a one-on-one match which is kind of pointless i think they do mm. change it every season which is like a month or so but it's just kind of a bit weird it's mostly single player yeah uh, thankfully it de- it's definitely the one mode that needs the most work i think everything else i think everything else is exactly where it needs to be now oh yeah big time in terms of quality and i mean there's so much content in the game but it's absolutely crazy i think yeah same i've yet, I've yet to play the uh, john cena mode uh, i will do it at some point um thankfully the trophies this year are a lot less of a grind my fashion there's tons of them though hey eh? there's heaps of them oh there's loads there's so many trophies <laughs> yeah i don't know why well there's so many mostly bronze um <laughs> because of course yeah uh, but yeah, there's loads. Thankfully, um, yeah, my last year, my faction, you had to get all the lifetime awards with, for getting like 200 wins on this and that. Uh, this time, thankfully, you only need 15 uh, lifetime challenges or whatever they're called, which is far That's less. quite than, the drop. Yeah, <laughs> quite the drop. It's far less and far more achievable, thankfully. Good. Um, and yeah, so that's been really fun. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot more VR stuff, more synth riders, which I'm really enjoying. Nice. Um, they've got these things called experiences, which are like um, most of them. You have to most of them are DLC, but there is a one on there. It's one uh, from the uh, Lindsay Sterling uh, DLC pack, which is free. Okay. Um, which is like 
it's like how to explain it. So it's like a like a more of like visualization. Um, it's more about the visuals going on around you. It's like everything's going on all around you. It's like you're inside mm. this like kaleidoscope of um, very cool just environments and graphics and yeah, it's one of the things you have to experience. I suppose that's why they call it ex- oh, okay. experience. But uh, but it's uh, yeah, it's very drippy, very cool, and just, it's just yeah, it just feels great. It feels like everything's like the three D audio is really good. Everything's happening all around you. You see all the visu- crazy visuals. It's, yeah, it's insane. I highly recommend that. Awesome. Um, and yeah, that's about it really. I want I want to play uh, Switchback. I've heard the reviews haven't been super great. Yeah, I saw that, which is um, disappointing, but. Yeah. Um, apparently, Supermassive are looking into the things that people have been complaining about That's good. Uh, during the review. So at least they're acknowledging it, and hopefully it will get better. Yeah. But it was one of the ones that I thought, oh, this is that's, that's going to be really good. Like yeah. like um, <clears throat> uh, Rush of Blood. Is that what it was called? Rush yeah, of Rush of Blood. Yeah, well, that was really good, I thought. Yeah, really good. I um, thought, you know, just a newer, better version of that. But it seems yeah. like it's a little bit of a disappointment, which sucks, but... Yeah, I pre-ordered it thinking it was going to be great. Um, but that's fine. I'm sure we'll get some uh, enjoyment out of it. And, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you will. I don't think, yeah. you, you know, yeah, the reviews haven't been super great. But let's be fair here. I've played games that have reviewed appallingly and I've really enjoyed them. Yeah, same here. It's, you know, it's all subjective at the end of the day. Of course it is. Yeah, it's, at the end of the day, it's people's opinion. Yeah, yeah. okay. A lot of people have, are of the same opinion. But these people are paid to have that opinion yeah so you know i think i I, i'm a firm believer of make your own opinion on the on games yeah i agree big time absolutely once man one man's trash is another man's treasure as they say of course yeah absolutely yeah so that's about it really um yeah a bit more horizon on vr there's just a bunch of like random VR things here and there. That's yeah. about it. How about yourself? So you've been dipping in and out of um, PS1 games, have you? Or um, yes, yeah, so I made so I made a video out now. Uh, a couple of videos actually. Uh, one was me. Good plug. Yeah, available now on youtubecom slash at Um <laughs> It's the last one I made. I recorded ages ago, which was me unboxing my PS1 I got from eBay with a bunch mm. of games. And the one I put out today is me testing testing the games. Which was a lot of fun, and uh, this week's video is a lot better quality. I made it in 4K this time, as opposed to uh, 1080. I think I did something wrong last last time because it was super blurry and didn't look super great. But this time, okay, it looks much better, much more crisp and clear, and awesome. uh, had a lot of fun with it. I made it as ent- entertaining as I could. Put some jokey things in there, so it should be, so hopefully, be a fun watch. So, uh, yeah, but you're, you're you're naturally entertaining anyway. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And you're naturally <laughs> witty. So the, the videos just work. And obviously it's a subject that you know a great deal about. So, it, oh, yeah. you know, these things for you just work. Yeah, thank you. I think, you know, it's, it's just about refining the the way of, of doing it, which, you know, you naturally will do. So, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm figuring it out. I think I enjoyed making it. And yeah, hopefully people enjoy watching it. Um, the first video is already at like 200 and something views, which is pretty good. Nice. This is a uh, yeah. So I think I think I'm onto something. Hopefully, you found your calling. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. But yeah, it's really fun. So check that out if you would, if you wouldn't mind. There you go. Check out youtubecom forward slash the Finn Steel. Yeah, we're saying it at, at the Finn Steel because the new way they've done it. I don't know. Oh yeah, weird. YouTube. Yeah. Why change it after all this time? I know it's strange, but hey, it's there. Yeah, fair. Um, <laughs> me, I've I have not been playing a great deal. I've been playing WWE 2K. Nice. As well, excellent. Uh, really enjoying myself with it. I have played some of the John Cena mode. Good, beer map. <laughs> yeah. I just stuck to the bottom of your glass. I hate when that happens. <laughs> it was as, as uh, makes a uh, appearance in my latest video. Got to vote in twenty two. That is. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's my new ghost. My new coaster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it? Um, wait, hang on. Is it a PS one game or anything? <laughs> oh, it is. Spoiler alert. It's a copy of uh, Need for Speed. Oh, which Need for Speed is it? <laughs> uh, the first one. Is it that bad, or does uh, it just not work? Uh, I'm sure I haven't had a chance to watch your video yet, so <laughs> I'm sure it's great, but it just doesn't work. Oh, that yeah. sucks. It gets stuck on the loading screen. It loads up, gets to the PS1 menu. There's like the logo thing, and it gets stuck on the loading screen forever. Is it just scratched to shit, or pretty much? Yeah, it looks <laughs> pretty bad. It's like all, all completely scratched up, basically. 
Looks like it looks like it's being dragged through travel, as I said in the video. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. No, bad times. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been yeah. So I've been I've been playing and enjoying WWE Two K. The John Cena showcase is pretty much what you'd expect. It's very similar uh, to the Rey Mysterio one from last year, which as well was really good. Which like sort of mixed the real world footage with in-game stuff no commentary to go along with it it's um literally just sort of generic and terrible music playing over the top of it the undertaker match the first undertaker match in particular just has really fucking awful music playing over the top of it it's so bad yeah it's one thing the soundtrack in that in that game is god awful aside from the one where dot jelly pepper song the rest of it is complete trash. I literally went on there. One of the first things I did when I turned up all that, left the one good song on there, and then went on the engine steams and turned Sad them all on. Sad but true by Metallica's on there, though. Oh, is it? I missed that one. I think I just hit the mute all button, turn on Chili Peppers, and <laughs> put on all the engine steams. So can you have entrance themes on instead? Yeah, yeah. We're going to the jukebox. Oh, well, I'm going to do that then, because it's, otherwise it's the same six songs repeated or whatever it is like last year i could pretty much learn all the words to bad bunny in spanish <laughs> yeah exactly but on the options menu there's like a jukebox and you can turn on engine steams on there oh okay i'm gonna do that that's that's way better let's turn on big boss man's uh hard times put that on repeat you'll be good oh hell yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you better take a trip down to car, can you jo- yeah hell yeah what a fucking banger that is so good. that's the thing all wrestling times. themes are the best it's so good as a, this the, is why they need to put the Mountie in these games, so that we can have the Mountie's entrance theme in there. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. That's another thing you'll see in my video. It's a, a couple of entrance themes from the Attitude Era. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I played Smackdown, the first Smackdown game. The first Smackdown was really good. It is. But really then the second one was better. Yeah, I feel like they get better as it goes on. As it goes on. Like, yeah, until like, you it, get to... Um, I think... Until you get to SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, and then they gradually get worse. Yeah, from there on, yeah, I see what you mean. I mean, 3's not great on the PS2. Just bring it. I don't think that's great. Yeah. Yeah, but I see what you mean, yeah. For, I think it, because it was light on content. Very true, actually, yeah. I think you're right. Is that, and I think, think Shut Your Mouth was pretty pretty good, and then Here Comes the Pain was just like 10 oh, out of 10. Oh, that's the benchmark. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, the SmackDown vs. Raw, the first two, SmackDown vs. Raw, was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the SmackDown vs. Raw, which I think is 2006, was good. Yep. But 2007, I don't think is that great. People really love it, but I, I think... played it on the 360 just a, like a few days back, and I just thought, no, this is not this, this is not great. Yeah, I'm trying to think which one had the really good GM mode. Was that 2006? I think it was like the last 2007 GM has got GM mode on it, but yeah. I'm not sure if 2006 has. I can't remember. I, can't remember. I know one of them, like, people really love the GM mode, didn't it? Come mm. six or seven, I can't remember. Uh, yeah. 2007 has got GM mode in it, so I'm, uh, it might, it's probably that one. Yeah, could be that one. Yeah. But GM, like you said, GM mode in this new one's really good. Yeah, it's great. Um, so addictive, though. Yeah. <laughs> Very addictive. So addictive. But I've, I've been playing universe mode. Oh, yeah? How is it? Uh, yeah, so it's good. I, I started a universe mode because, you, you know, universe mode is the mode that I, I like the most. But, you know, it just it, it becomes a little bit nonsense because it throws you in mixed tags and all this sort of stuff. And you're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I don't want to do this shit. I just don't want to. <laughs> um, so I've started a universe mode as Cody Rhodes. And nice. you basically can... You, you, you work rivalries in between premium live events which is really good and you can sort of pick actions and it sort of triggers off cutscenes depending on the actions that you pick um so yeah i mean the first few weeks were a bit rocky because i was literally wrestling the miz on every show <laughs> god <laughs> um but then it, uh, i got to pick my own rivalry so i thought oh i'll, I'll do a rivalry with aj styles that could be fun nice. so i did that um and in the meantime edge beat roman for the championship so I thought, okay, I'm going to wrestle Edge for the championship. So I did, and now I'm the champion. Awesome. <laughs> That's so, cool. Um, it's really good. Um, and you're right in what you're saying. The graphics are better than last year. I think the lighting has been improved yeah. vastly, which I think helps massively with the graphics. The way that the game flows is a lot better. I still, I think the pacing is perfect for a wrestling game. Yeah, I like that a lot as well. 
Uh, but but <clears> I just think the, the way that the game works, like, you know, like the way that the, the wrestler will, you know, if you're in trouble, will roll to the ropes and try and get themselves back up. Yeah. That's or if they if, you know, or, or they'll try and they'll, they'll roll out the ring. So the action gets taken outside and then you're, the other guy will follow. Mm. Um, I just think it works very, very well. It's a really well put together wrestling game that combined with the fact there is so much content in it. Like you can literally play that game forever. There, yeah. There's so much to do that you, you could you could get hours and hours out of it. It's crazy. Yeah, literally. Have we done the multi en- uh, multi man entrance with Roman yet? With the the Usos and Heyman. I haven't. No. It's really good. It's like, awesome. Li- it's literally perfect. <laughs> They've nailed it completely. Yeah. yeah. We've got good guy. Heyman's got one championship. Roman's got the other. Got the Usos oh, in the background awesome. doing their thing. It's very cool. That's very cool. I like that. Um, <laughs> I think stuff like that is, is just done to perfection. Just done to TV perfection, I think. Yeah, same. Like, so I noticed I that Cody's got two entrances. He's got uh, the one where he just walks out, and he also has the one where he comes up from the floor. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's good. Which is really cool. A uh, couple of disappointing things is for, you know, Sammy's got the new Sammy Zayn t-shirt. Like, yeah. You know, the one, not the honorary use one, but the one that he brought out that says... In that, still in that style, but it says Zane instead of on a reuse or whatever. Yeah, it got it Zane uh, over it. Yeah, Uso, yeah. Um, but it's still got the, the crap music instead of the good one. Yeah, I know it's that. It's which like is really heel, disappointing. Like and I'm surprised that music isn't even on the game at all. Yeah, maybe that'll batch it in at some point. But uh, yeah, another thing that's like well, pretty out of date at this point. It's Dominic Mysterio still a face. Yes, he's not part of the Judgment Day or anything like that. Which yeah, is a bit, bit bounce. I actually went and downloaded a SJW of a. Uh, or Dominic, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Um, and also, um, Vinci from Imperium. Oh, yeah, he's got his NXT. He isn't yeah. following suit. He has the Imperium music and stuff, Yeah, but he's still wearing the white pants and doing his uh, NXT Vinci poses. Yeah, in the commentary, he talks about you know, his Vinci NXT thing as well. Yeah. So there's a few, you know, there's a few bits <clears throat> that, you can, you, that you can pick out, but overall... Um, I, I feel like 2K, uh, after all these years, really finally starting to get it right. Yeah, they're getting there. They're, they're doing it. They've learned. War Games uh, is cool. Very cool, actually. Yeah, I know. Have a quick, uh, mo- quick game of that. Yeah, I've only had one match, but I thought it was cool. Yeah. But no, I think yeah. I think 2K20 definitely was like a wake up call for them. It's like, oh, okay. oh Jesus, oh shit, we actually need to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to fix ah, this. wrestling fans are going to call us out on our bullshit. We better. <laughs> We better step this up. Yeah, that year off did did him a world of good. Oh god, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, what? I don't, I, I don't hate two K battlegrounds. I actually think two K battlegrounds is pretty good. Yeah, it's all right. Fun little arcadey beat 'em up. Yeah, yeah, it's decent. But um, yeah, two K twenty three, very, very good. Worthy of the 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 praise that it is getting from reviewers, but not only reviewers, but everyone. I think everyone who's played it has been very positive about it. And that's good. Yeah. It's about time that we finally got good wrestling games again. Yes. Now it's our AEW game. Come on. Yeah. Well, at yeah. this point, what AEW game? You know, Tony <laughs> Khan the other day said it was finished and we would be hearing something about it very soon. But all we've been hearing is coming soon. Dude, where the fuck is it? Yeah. It's done. Just bring it out. Come on. But, you know, it's, it'd be dumb to bring it out this... You know, you can't bring it out now because true. 2K. Good point. But, you know, give us a release date. Give us a release date in the next, you know, short amount of time so that we can at least have something to look forward to. Show us more than the shit footage that you've shown us so far. Yeah, so it's like an actual full match or something. Yeah, a full match without cutting to real footage. Yeah. Because that's a cop out. If it's done, then the, there's there's full match footage out there, right? Exactly. You think so? You don't want to be cutting out. It looks like you're cutting out glitches and things. Like, show us one full match to show that the game is finished and it works. Yeah, and, yeah. Can't be that hard. I, ju- I, d- I do worry for it. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, ju- I think just just simply because of the lack of well anything that we've seen. Yeah, it's been, it's been barely anything. There's, at this rate, half the roster is going to be back in WWE. There's all the old Cody Rhodes <laughs> in there. CM Punk's gone. Kenny Omega is rumored to be potentially going to WWE, and the Young Bucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, mm. Half the people on the covers is going to be gone. Yeah, just be a no, <laughs> just be no cover, just the AEW logo. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I'm really hoping 
that we see something positive from it soon. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Come on, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, Tony. <laughs> He's like, it's done. It's done. After he snorted a massive bag of Coke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's done, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Out, That's slander. Out. I'm sorry, Tony. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I don't care. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, aside from WWE 2K23, I haven't really been playing a great deal myself. Yeah. Um, I had a quick blast on a game called Evil West, which is a game that I've been excited for for a little while, and uh, that's yeah. really good. Got on Game Pass. Uh, uh, no, it isn't. I actually bought it. Oh, it's okay. one I've been wanting to play for a little while now. Um, it's 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 a weird. It's it's like a. It's a weird game. I can't even explain it. It's just like a, it's set in Western. It's like a, it's a Western setting. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I I can't explain it. It's but it's good fun. Cool. It's a it's a non-serious type game. Good. I like non-serious good, games with fun combat and yeah. it's very linear. That's good. Old school. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's quite an old school style game, but it is really good. So I would recommend that. But. Uh, it's one that I personally have been wanting to play for a little while because it looks like the kind of game that I would enjoy and it absolutely is. Cool. Um, so yeah, I recommend that. Uh, I've also played Scars Above. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I also really like. Again, another game that's been sort of middling in terms of reviews. Yeah, I, I, see, I saw the reviews weren't good, but now I keep seeing people on Twitter saying how much they like it. So yeah, yeah it's one of those reviews, reviews and people's like actual players' opinions differ. One of those kind yeah. of games, but this this is the problem I think because you know, scars scars above is a you know it's a good it's a good game it's not a full price game either it's like I think it's I think it's like thirty thirty five quid ish okay but so it's not a full price game it's a budget title for yeah. you know the most part and it plays well it looks good you know it's not it's like Returnal light I would say okay that's cool I like Returnal. It's not. It's not difficult. Yeah. Um, but it's it's good. I, I, I'm not sure what reviewers. Um, you know, I'm not sure what people are wanting from games because, you know, a game like Scars Above, it's not going to be on many people's radar. Mm. You know, it's had a, a a viral marketing campaign at best where they've just shoved uh, adverts onto Facebook and Twitter or whatever oh, and yeah. Instagram. So you know. It's already not on people's radars. And then you've got reviewers sort of being like, ugh, 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 shit. <laughs> but then the general consensus when people play the game is like, oh, this is actually really good. Yeah. I don't know. I think there needs to be some sort of... Uh, I, think, I think there needs to be... I don't know. Uh, uh, just something to give players a bit more power in terms of giving an opinion before... You know, instead of sort of just people relying on reviews all the time. Because, you know, players... It's like, you know, when people go watch films that critics have slated. Um, you, you know, Rotten Tomatoes has that sort of thing where, um, you know, you have like a, a viewer score and a critic score. I'm sure there is a, a version of that for gaming, but I feel like it needs to be a bit more prominent because, you know, games like Scars Above are going to suffer because of it. Yeah, it is. You know, Metacritic has a user score. But then again, that gets abused, and people, you know, fan. Well, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, it's hard to hard to make it work right. But I know what you mean. Yeah. But, uh, but speaking of games, people or reviewers didn't like. Uh, I actually played. I briefly played some Recall on Xbox Game Pass. Oh yeah. It's for like a a, a Microsoft Rewards Quest. Uh, yeah. I actually really liked it. It's really fun. I think yeah, it must have had. It's good. Yeah, I think it must have had some uh, patch for the Series X slash S, because it runs really smoothly. I think one of the complaints when it came out was that it didn't run very well, uh, but it was like 60 FPS, 4K when I was playing it, mm-hmm. so it runs really well, and it was just just really fun, pretty unique. It's like a little like character action combat, but using a gun, using guns that like weapons for combos. You got a yeah. little dog companion with you. Robot dog. It's yeah, really yeah. Fun. That's Enjoy. a game that I really liked as well. I thought yeah. it was, thought it was good, and it, it is different. Yeah, it's not people really... don't like different a lot of the time. <laughs> but yeah, good um, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of Xbox exclusive games that are middling for sure, yeah. and but I, I feel like that one was hard done to and sort of forgotten about. But um, I'm glad you went back and tried it out. I know it was for the for the quest, 
um, like for the for the punch card thing. But yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. I might have to come out of this. This is fun. Yeah, definitely do because it's good. Yeah, if anyone wants to check that out on Game Pass, it's there for free. It runs nice and smooth down the Series X. So yeah, check it out. No excuse. Yeah. <laughs> you can just give it half an hour of your time. You, the, you, the game introduces you to the core mechanics properly in the first half an hour, and you can get an idea as whether you're going to enjoy it or not. Yeah. Uh, but story is fine. Setting is cool. The game mechanics are very good. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would say Recore is 100% worth looking at. Yeah, definitely. Check it out. There you go. Games and Graps, seal of approval yeah. for Recore. From however fucking long ago, six <laughs> years. Yeah, long, long time. Like one of the early, early Xbox One games. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but good a good time. game nonetheless. Yeah, really good. So yeah, Scars Above, I recommend. Evil West, I recommend. Um, I'm still plodding away at Hogwarts Legacy. Um, I finished the main campaign of Gran Turismo Seven. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, which was which was good. Excellent. Um, I like how Sony sends you an email. Oh yeah, when said congratulations on I think this trophy yeah. or whatever. Yeah, congratulations on finishing the game. Here's the stats. I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's, I like it actually. I got that from like God of God of War or something. You can you mm. got the platinum trophy. You have this free wallpaper or something. So, okay. Yeah, right. I, I like stuff like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to do that, but they do do it, and I think that's great. Yeah. Nice one, Good Sony. on you, Sony. <laughs> For the players. Good stuff. <laughs> for the players and people who read their emails yeah <laughs> <laughs> for the email readers <laughs> well, people who still oh, use email man. for the few of you yeah <laughs> yeah the, the few of you that still use email this is for you yeah the old farts <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any games that sort of like, you'd be looking to go and play again this year you know if there's like any games that you know, you think, oh, I'd really like to go back and play that again. Is there anything that's on your list of games to go back and play this year? Um, I wouldn't mind, before Final Fantasy sixteen comes out, I wouldn't mind going back and playing fifteen again. Because uh, after I played it, they did update it quite a bit and added some few things, which I never went back mm. to. So I wouldn't mind going back and trying it out. Give it another quick playthrough. Skipping all the tired stuff, just playing through the story and checking out the new stuff they added. Um, yeah. That might be fun. Because the game mm. gets a bad rap, but I think it's, I really enjoyed it when I played it. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I only played it briefly, but I, I enjoy what I played. But I think, I think they catered for people like me with Final Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah, they made it accessible for new, for new players. The combat's yeah. more action focused. Yeah, for, oh, it definitely is. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the reason I asked that question is because I saw a TikTok the other day, and there was a guy who was like going through the stuff that he was going to play through again this year. Oh yeah. I was like, oh, that yeah, there, there is stuff that I would like to go back and play. It's just finding the time to do it. Yeah, exactly. So I want to go back and play Sleeping Dogs. Oh, my goodness. Sleeping Dogs are so good. I think of all of like... See? Sleeping Dogs rules! <laughs> so freaking good. I think of all of like three pounds on the PS4 yep. and stuff and played it. <laughs> <laughs> I played it on it's the fucking amazing. I love Sleeping Dogs. It's so freaking good. Why do people talk about the game anymore? <laughs> why, why wasn't it as equal? Make more. Yeah. Come on. Make, make <laughs> way more games. Wei yeah. Shen is awesome. Great character. Do that. Yeah. Do more of them. Come on. Oh, so someone mentioned Burnout a while ago on Twitter. I was like, oh, Burnout Paradise. I want to play that again. Oh, Burnout Paradise is so good. It's so good. Great soundtrack. Great well. soundtrack, too. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the hell's his name? DJ DJ Atomica? Oh, yeah. That's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God uh, damn it. I've got it on soundtrack. Switch. Nice. I've got it on PS4, I think. Yeah, I think, I think I've got it. I think it's on Game Pass as well. Oh, is it? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's with so, EA, uh, it? Burnout. Yeah, yeah. Burnout Paradise is a great game. So good, but I like the originals. Like Burnout One was so unique when it came out. Yeah, and then Two was really good. Oh man, so good, so good. Yeah, Sleeping Dogs. I really want to play through it. I just loved about Sleeping Dogs how, just how fun it was. It was like it didn't take itself too seriously. It knew that it was, you know. There's always going to be the the them GTA comparisons with any sort of open world crime game. Yeah. So it knew what it was up against, but it just took it, and you know the hand to hand combat is awesome. It's so good. It's like it took the best parts out of different games and made their own game. It's like like yeah. combat hour for Arkham Asylum. And you got like GTA driving stuff, and you got like yep. Yakuza type story. 
It's like yeah, it's like all the good elements from loads of different games put into one game. It's like and you can do karaoke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, I, mean, I want to go back and play Sleeping Dogs because um, one game I never played that um, I do intend to play is True Crime Streets of LA. Oh yeah, I remember that one. I think I played that on PS2 or something. Yeah, because Sleeping Dogs is the like the spiritual successor to those games. Yeah. Hmm. So I bought a copy of it for three pound twenty six to be precise from <laughs> eBay. Nice bargain for, for the original Xbox. I'm going to play on my three sixty here. Good idea. I like it. So yeah, I, I love. I don't know why. I, I just love Sleeping Dogs. It's so good. Yeah, it really is. And if you've not played it, firstly you're missing out. Secondly, it's always less than three quid. <laughs> yeah, always on sale. In sales, because <laughs> every because uh, it's, it's like one of those games that everyone seems to own. Yeah. <laughs> Like murdered soul suspect at this point. Oh yeah, you know, it's like always less than three quid in sales. Yeah, that's pretty good as well. Not as good as Sleeping Dogs, I, but it's all right. I I never played it, murdered soul suspect. Yeah, I, I I always see it for like I think I even own it. I probably own it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's always good. less than three quid, and I'm like, I should probably just get this, perhaps. <laughs> but yeah, it's so like basically you're you're a detective solving your old mur- your your own murder. Basically, you're like a ghosty guy. It's fun. Ghosty guy. A ghosty guy. <laughs> T- trademark <laughs> yeah ghosty guy but it, it looked fun yeah I think it, I honestly think it's like £2.39 at the minute on the Xbox store <laughs> wouldn't surprise me but yeah it's not going to not going to blow you away but it's it's a fun you know distraction for about 8 hours playthrough yeah yeah so if you don't, you don't if you don't have a horrendous backlog like we all do <laughs> yeah. then go play Sleeping Dogs and Murder Soul Suspect you'll have a great time exactly <laughs> Sleeping Dogs isn't that long, really. No, not really. Yeah. But a good time, nonetheless. So good. So good. I need to play that now. You've, yeah. remi- you've reminded me about, about it, and then you can play it. Yeah. It's classic Wei Shen. Yeah. <laughs> Two Chin Chow. <laughs> the, like the fucking bag, one of the bad guys. I love it. Dog Eyes. Oh, man, what a, what a game. What <laughs> a game. Oh, man. <laughs> good times. <laughs> can't, I honestly can't believe they never made a sequel because it clearly did well. I know. Who even made it? I don't remember. Is it a Square? It's not Square, is it? I don't remember. Let's have a look. Let me have a look. Sleeping. This is where you get a bunch of pictures of actual dogs sleeping. <laughs> 2012 when it came out. Oof. That's impossible. It's, it's a Square Enix game. Oh, it is. <laughs> Got him Square. Hey, Square, stop making the shit games that you're making <laughs> and do another Sleeping Dogs. Yeah, come on. It can't be that hard. How was that 2012? Jeez. Oh, so here we go. Look, Sleeping Dogs, uh, difficult and prolonged development began in 2008. The game was announced in 2009 as part of the True Crime series. All right. Hmm. But it was cancelled by Activision Blizzard in 2011. As a result, the project's delays and budget issues. Six months later, Square Enix purchased the publishing rights and renamed it Sleeping Dogs. Huh. Wow. Square, what are you hey, doing? Hey, Square Enix, let's let's do this, okay? Come on. Everybody tweet Square Enix. Sleeping Dogs and 2, say, hashtag. Yeah. Yeah. Sleeping Dogs 2, the return of Wei Shen. Hmm. Let's on. do it. Let, let's, let's campaign for Sleeping Dogs 2. The campaign starts here. This is where the campaign trail begins. <laughs> Yeah, you're not making this forespoken to anymore. Let's let's face it. So come on. That yep. I'd be surprised if it gets another update. <laughs> yeah. I played it after the update and it's still the same. I mean I still like it, but it doesn't feel any different. Yeah. Strange. Um so instead of doing that, focus your attention on sleeping dogs too. <laughs> oh. No one like no one cares for outriders. I forgot that game even existed. Exactly. Yep. That other game that you made that was a service, live service game, died on its ass straight away. Babylon's Fall. That's the one, yeah. Um, the Avengers is done for now. Yep, at this point, pretty much. There's only one, There's only apart from Final Fantasy, there's only one person that can save you, Square Enix. <laughs> it's and Wei it's Wei Shen. Yeah. <laughs> bring him back. <laughs> bring back Sleeping Dogs 2. Yeah. No, in fact, just bring Sleeping Dogs 2. Bring Sleeping Dogs back with Sleeping Dogs 2. Yes. Agreed. Fuck yeah, what a game. <laughs> I love with the combat as well, like the environmental combat. Oh, like yeah. You, 
there's like an air con in the wall and <laughs> Wei Shen will just throw the, the guy in, into it and like mutilate his head. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's so much fun. Yeah. Ah, I'm just seen... dreaming of Sleeping Dogs 2 now. Yeah, it's always seems to be, it was one of those games that just kind of somehow fell under the radar. Somehow. Like, everyone but loves everyone it. everyone has it. Yeah, everyone has it. Everyone loves it. But it just it just fell out of I don't know the public yeah. eye. It's kind of disappeared. Yeah. Weird. Until now. Until now. Make it happen, Square. Until now. <laughs> Sleeping Dogs Two is going to happen. <laughs> there will be will be characters in there because we made it happen yep. single handedly. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good times. Um, so yeah, that's that's the game I want to go back and play this year. And I might, I'm, I'm going to do it. Cool. Good idea. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what I did play. I played um, not, uh, Fight Night Round 3 on the oh, 360. Because yeah. I, I was scrolling through my achievements and I noticed that I'd had, I didn't have any of the achievements for it. All right. And then I clicked on it and there's like eight achievements and all of them are really fucking easy. Uh, so I'm just going to go on and thousand. Yeah, it's like literally, it's, you know, it was the very early days of the Xbox 360 when they didn't understand achievements at this point. <laughs> yeah. So it was literally just sort of, uh, uh, okay, win all these fights and you can have a thousand game score. I might even have that one, thinking about it. I might have rented it from Love Film or something <laughs> during that era. <laughs> Love Film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> during that era of gaming before game bars all these things yeah for, for digital sales film. yeah yeah <laughs> and I, I love film then turned into netflix yeah and it was so bad like net when netflix first came about it all it was was just like a taken over version of love film pretty much and it sucked yep <laughs> and now netflix is fucking massive so yeah well on netflix yeah. Fight Night Round 3, best boxing game ever, and will never be beaten. It's very good. I enjoyed it. Even though I enjoyed it, and I don't like boxing. Yeah, and it's still so good now, and it still looks incredible. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm back, speaking of, another time I went back and played uh, Final Fantasy 13 because that was on Game Pass. That looks so good. Like, they've upped the resolution yeah, and stuff, but it still looks amazing. Like, how did they. Yeah. How is this on the 360? It's so good. Yeah, the 360 was just. was honestly an unbelievable console. Yeah. Good Amazing. times. Yeah. I played um, very briefly, because I bought, again, I bought it off eBay. Uh, Raw 2. Oh, interesting. I never WWE played the Raw games. Raw 2. Yeah. Um, they're very different. Hmm. And I, went, I play I only had a, a quick match. Um, but it actually, it's, it's, it's actually quite an interesting game. It's quite clunky. But yeah. the way that the game works is actually pretty good. Okay. And the roster is ridiculous. And the entrances are awesome. And it's like... It's one of the only games series. Well, the, I think this might even be the only one that does it. But um, like when you do like a finisher, it cuts away into the double feature. You know, like uh, with the replay. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it literally cuts away, so the like the game is still on the screen, but then it shows the replay as the double feature, like it does on TV. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, like it's really cool. Next time you're here, we'll play it on the 360, and yeah. uh, you can see it in action. It's it's, it's yeah, the first one not great, but the second one is is better. That's cool. So I had the GameCube ones. Just, man, there were a lot of wrestling games around that time. You had SmackDown vs. So War, many wrestling games. And then you had the GameCube ones, which are like the uh, WrestleMania. Day of the Reckoning. Day, Day of Reckoning. Yep. And oh, then, yeah. Day of Reckoning is awesome. Like I remember when I first got Day of Reckoning, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is like a genuinely good alternative to the the PlayStation games." Yeah, they're great. I've still got them on my shelf over there. Dave uh, Reckoning 2 had fucking Stacey Keebler and Stacey Keebler alone on the cover. Yeah, literally. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm Stacey Keebler. Don't mind looking at Stacey Keebler. Yeah, yeah. Don't okay. get me wrong. But uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a random choice. Yeah. Great games, though. But they had the WrestleMania games as well on the GameCube. Yeah. I think it's X7 and X8. 18 and 19. Oh, 18 and 19. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But yeah, then they had stuff. Raw and Raw 2. Which so it was quite cool because they all had their own exclusive rest WWE games. Yeah, that's a cool, cool era. All made by different divisions of THQ. Yeah. So they were all very different in their own way, which I thought was very cool. Yeah, me too. And the PlayStation had the better ones, but you know they were they were all very unique in their own way. Yeah. I want to go back and play the Day of Reckoning games. 
You say? Mm. Fond memories. Great soundtrack as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this podcast has been about absolutely fucking nothing so far. Just, just nostalgia. Remember, remember all these... 40 minutes! <laughs> remember when we played these good games? They were fun. Yeah, remember when games were really good and we didn't have to like... <laughs> You know, the game you got was literally the game you got, and then there was no change in it. Yeah, no updates, no DLC. It was just one yeah. good game. Just game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no season pass, just every character was just shoehorned into the game. <laughs> yeah. Cross time hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. God damn it. Good times. Yeah. I love the GameCube, you know. GameCube was like super underrated, I think. Yeah. Making great exclusives. Yeah. So many like the Zelda's on their own are great. Metroid Prime, three of those, well, yeah. two of those, and the yeah. third one's on the Wii. Um, yeah, so good. Mm. Did I tell you that I played Metroid Prime on Switch? Uh, I don't think so. It's really good. It might have been last week, I can't remember. I can't remember either, but it's really good. Have you got it now? Because it's out on physical, isn't it? Uh, yes, I've got, I've got it on my uh, physically. I haven't played it yet, but. Uh, oh, dude, it's so good. It's I, I love that game. It's like, literally one of my favorite GameCube games. And it's outrageously beautiful as well. Yeah, it's like they've actually properly remastered it. Like mm. they're not just up up to the uh, resolution; they've actually gone and fixed everything. <laughs> Basically, it made it look amazing. Yeah, it's a crazy good game. Yeah, like I mean, I've, I've seen the reviews for it. It's getting crazy ten out of tens and stuff, and it's worth it because it's really awesome. Yeah, so so good. So good. Oh, did um, too. Come on. <laughs> do you think they'll do it? I uh, hope so. Maybe, maybe on the build up to Metro Prime Four, if they ever get around to releasing that at some point. I mean, who knows what Nintendo are doing now? Everyone seems to be sort of thinking that um, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be like the last big Switch game. Yeah, could be. Then you hear reports I, of people saying, "I really don't understand what Nintendo could possibly do console wise next because the Switch is ridiculously popular." Yeah. I see reports of people saying, like, the Switch has another five years in it. I was like, does it, though? I know it's still crazy popular, but it's it's lagging behind. It's been lagging behind for a long time, graphically, anyway. In terms of looks and stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, when you look at the the, the PS5 and the, the Series X and stuff, then, yeah, okay, it's it's lagging behind. But I think in terms of quality games, it's, it's probably not. Yeah, that's true. At the end of the day, it's the games that matter. The yeah. and stuff. I mean, Zelda looks great. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna buy the game regardless. The first one was amazing. There's no doubt, that one's gonna be great as well. Yeah, but I, you know, again, I don't know what they do. Do they do another version? Do they do a Switch Two? Do they do a just a? I don't know. It's the Pro. long-awaited <laughs> Switch Pro. I don't know. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I have an OLED Switch. You know, I think it's it's very very good, and games look great on it, and. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I just don't know where Nintendo go. I mean, I always say this, and then Nintendo just turn up with something. I mean, the <laughs> Wii was obviously uh, just a groundbreaking, and every household had one, basically. Yeah, that was insane. Because um, everyone's grandma was playing fucking Wii Tennis or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And the Wii U was the Wii U, mm. you know. It wasn't great. Um, but then they the thing it. is, it wasn't terrible, though. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I had fun with it. Didn't have a whole lot of games on yeah. it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had fun with what I played. Um, but the Switch is like is awesome. Yeah, but yeah. I just I don't know what's going to be what's going to next. Is it another Switch? Because they've clearly... that, that's the only thing I can think because the, the the handheld and home console just works too well. Yeah, they've clearly found they've clearly onto something with the Switch. <laughs> so that's just I just imagine a Switch Two or something like that. Yeah, Switch if they 2 bother. with up resed you know, 4K and stuff, I guess. Yeah. OLED as standard for handheld mode, 4K, HDR on TV mode. Yeah. I mean, there's the uh, Steam Link, which uh, is its closest, the closest competitor, I'd say. But uh, Steam Deck. Steam Deck, that's the one. Steam Link is something else. It's so expensive, <laughs> though. It is. It's insane. Yeah. But the, the, there's not even an OLED version of that. Yeah, don't think so. Hmm. We'll see. 
Nintendo. Just don't make another one, Nintendo. <laughs> just keep bringing Switch games out. Keep fighting the power. Another <laughs> another 85 courses for DLC for Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So just give us your entire Nintendo back catalogue on Switch so we can play like Wind Waker and stuff. Yeah, there you go. Top down. Fixed it. Fixed it. No new consoles needed for Nintendo. How is Wind Waker not on the Switch? I know. Uh, d- what, come on. <laughs> How? The Skyward Sword is. Yeah, it's got, yeah, exactly. Skyward Sword. Like, I don't mean I like Skyward Sword, but it's, it's not. Yeah, I do, yeah. It's not Wind Waker. Even Twilight no. Princess, you know. It's like a no brainer. Yeah. You would feel like cause it's, it's a Wind Waker on um, Wii U as well. Yeah, it's a Wii U HD version. It looks, it's just and yet it's not made to Switch, it which I actually can't believe. Yeah, just take it off that, pin it on that. Done. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> fixed. Yeah. Fixed. Again, we fixed it. Yeah. You're welcome, Nintendo. We fixed it for you, Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo is just good at Nintendo always, though. Yeah. But yeah, we could make a ton of money doing this, but yeah. We'll make, we'll just have Nintendo before. Directs for movies. <laughs> yeah. Hey Nintendo, just put a trailer out for the movie. We don't need to know everything else about it. <laughs> we don't need a twenty minute Nintendo Direct about the Mario movie. Because just put a trailer out. That's why. Yeah. Everybody's already gonna watch that movie. Everyone's sold on it already. You're fine. Yeah. As soon as you said it and it was made by the same people that make fucking minions and stuff, <laughs> we, we know it's a winner. We yeah. we already know. <laughs> so you don't need to have a weird Nintendo Direct about it. <laughs> here's how the cast came together hey no one cares not one single person cares yeah but on the blu-ray extras or something no one... yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. that's what they'll do they'll just have all the nintendo directs that they've had as the blu-ray extras <laughs> yeah yeah uh... god damn nintendo man <laughs> i don't even know what we were talking about i'm so lost on this podcast i have no idea yeah who knows anymore it's on... <laughs> yeah. resident evil force me getting good reviews yeah great reviews 10 out of 10 to so like 90 something on metacritic um, crazy crazy can't wait it looks so good though yeah literally it's just yeah it's version evil 4 looks better more stuff updated and just yeah yeah graphics are supposed to be amazing as well I, I've, I've avoided the demo because i don't want to play the demo that's fair and ruin it i wanted to just sort of whether it ruins it or not i don't know yeah i'm guessing it's a portion of the actual game still but yeah uh, it's, it's very brief it's just the very start you know when you first get to the village and everyone's kind of wandering around um, and you got they all attack you, and you got to try and defend yourself until the bell rings. The chainsaw guy turns up, and then everyone leaves, and that's the demo basically. Oh, okay, yeah, it's good. And have you played it? Yeah, played it. It's, oh, you uh, have played it. Okay, yeah, it's fun. It's Resident Evil Four, but nicer. Awesome. <laughs> Does yeah. Leon still do a German suplex? Um, I haven't seen him do a German suplex yet, but hopefully it's, it's still in there. I hope it's still in there because that was it was a key feature in Resident <laughs> Evil Four for me. It really was, yeah. Just Leon doing a German suplex. <laughs> just out of nowhere. <laughs> Isn't it so weird how like wrestling moves were always so prominent in like a lot of these games? Yeah. It's just... A lot of games like this are people that just randomly do a brain buster. <laughs> yeah. One of uh, any original Final Fantasy Seven, like one of Tifa's moves was a brain buster. <laughs> it's li- li- Why? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It lifts up the enemy. It's probably like flips upside down and drops it on the head. It's great. Brain buster. Yeah. <laughs> Loads of like hur- uh, hurricane runners and head scissors and stuff in video games. Yeah, was it uh, Sleeping Dogs two or three that had like stunners and things like that randomly? Oh, Saints Row, you mean? Saints Row, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we wish there was a Sleeping Dogs two or three. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> well, I Sleeping Dogs. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, there was loads of wrestling moves in the Saints Row games, like stunners and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think I think got Watch Dogs, but I think that's. Yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, Watch Dogs. Yeah, yeah, third one might have. I don't know. But yeah, Saints Row. And... I've only played through, and only very recently played through the first one. Yeah, as you know, because we it's talked terrible. about it. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, two is good, but I've never played through it all. And the third one, uh, the one in London, I it was fine. Yeah, I think Just I played. Okay. I think I played the mod. Yeah, I think I played the multiplayer, multiplayer beta for three. I think I seem to remember them breaking out a Stone Cold Stunner at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because of course, of in course. everyday combat, that's exactly what you would do. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah, work, someone but... swings and misses with a punch. Your first instinct, kick, stunner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Imagine doing that in a real fight. Yeah, like put you, you know you're putting up your dukes in a, in a in a fist fight in the street. Come on, you idiot or whatever. <laughs> and then someone kicks and stunner. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I 
And someone just tries, move out the way. Yeah, someone tries to grab their head and it's like, come on, this isn't how it works. <laughs> You're supposed to come down <laughs> on your knees and... <laughs> yeah. It's, and then you've got Leon Kennedy just busting out German suplex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he turned around and someone's just German suplexing some random guy. <laughs> I mean, it'd be funny to see. Yeah, it'd be Just great. a fight breaking out and some dude just cracks out a German suplex. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then a girl it. also fighting breaks out a brain buster <laughs> yeah <laughs> good stuff and then a guy comes flipping and uh, flies over a bench with like a, a tope <laughs> yeah and someone just shouts that's how real fight it should be it should be that's how real people fight yeah it's a real man and women <laughs> fight yeah <laughs> so yeah Resident Evil 4 I, I, I'm really looking forward to playing it I, see I like the other remakes yeah they're all great so good. Two was two was phenomenal. Three was very much an action game, a very linear action game. Yeah, I think they cut out part of three as well, which was a bit weird. Um, but yeah, I really liked three though. I, I thought it was, yeah, I really enjoyed. It. I thought it was good. Yeah, they've all been great. Um, one remake on the GameCube is really good. I think they need to one remake on the GameCube is very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a re remake it in the in the style of the new ones, as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Make it all shiny and nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. Keep the same shit voice acting though, please. Oh yeah, don't change the voice acting. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, literally lift it from the from Resident Evil director's cut on the PlayStation One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a mansion! <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have the same opening cutscene as well with the real actors. Oh yeah, oh my god, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Albert Wesker, he like slicks his hair back. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> does he have a comb? Does he comb it? Or I think does he does. He actually, back with his hands. I think he got yeah. a comb yeah. It's so 90s, Albert Wesker. <laughs> Their voices are all dubbed over. You've got like Jill yeah. saying, I can't remember what the guy's name is. He shouts someone's name. It's like the lip sync doesn't match up at all. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's amazing how the Resident Evil franchise has gone from, from that. <laughs> the thing is, it, it almost feels like two games. Like when you load up the first one and you see that unbelievable opening bit. <laughs> Yeah, with the real actors, and then it, you cut to the actual game. You're like, this is two different things. It has to be, <laughs> but that, that that is from something else. Like the original concept of what this maybe should have been, which would have been like a an FMV game or something, <laughs> and then to to this exquisite survival horror game that yeah. we have here that we're playing now. Let's see if I can bring up the uh, Resident Evil opening. Um, put it on screen. Hold on, let's have a look. Oh, that would be awesome. Let's have a look. Oh, I think this is it. Hold on. All right, oh, see what yes. this on screen. How did I do that last time? Um, I think if you present, is it present in the bottom? Oh. Share screen. Yeah, I think that might be it. Um, Opera tab. Which one? <laughs> which one? Which one? This one. Hell yeah. yeah, oh, yeah yes. Yeah. <laughs> Raccoon Forest, you know? <laughs> Alpha Team is flying around, flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we're searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle <laughs> of our mission. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about 10 people. Victims were apparently eaten. It's long enough, but... Bravo team went to the hideout of the group and Imagine disappeared. that just been a little piece in the newspaper as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there's zombies and stuff. It'll be fine. Yes. People getting attacked by 10 people. <laughs> yeah. This is state-of-the-art filmmaking, by the way. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Top 90s quality, 90 quality uh, video. Yeah. It's like college school. It was Bravo like Team's helicopter. Projects. Nobody was yeah. in it. But strangely, most of the Harry. equipment was still there. <laughs> <laughs> was hair is fucking however, awesome. <laughs> however, we soon discovered why. <laughs> Chris, <they're> tough. <laughs> Hey, come here! 
This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Joseph! <laughs> <laughs> Joseph! No! Don't go! That limp thing wasn't even close. <laughs> no, not even slightly close. <laughs> How'd you get it so wrong? <laughs> I'd run faster. I'd yeah. be running as quick as I possibly could. Yeah, don't bother trying to shoot it. I like light jogging. Redfield. The music, slap at the bass. Oh yeah. Jill Valentine. Mary Burton. Rebecca Chambers. Alvin oh, Wesker. Oh yeah, they're going. Okay. Damn. Resident Evil. <laughs> Amazing. That was so good. And they go to the gameplay. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how she, I just love how bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph. Oh, man. I wish all games from that era had that kind of intro. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, mean, I wish just Resident Evil live action. Enjoy. Yeah. Oh man! Does Res Resident Evil Two doesn't have some anything like that, does it? No, no, it's all in, all in game. God damn it! <laughs> they missed a trick. They did. Imagine the curtains on <clears throat> the the guy playing Leon. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Yeah. Uh, Although that you know that intro to that game is still better than the last Resident Evil movie. True. Yeah. Yeah. What in fact, got? I quite liked the. Have you seen uh, any of the Resident Evil movies? Uh, the, the first couple, yeah, with uh, Mila Jovovich. Yeah, yeah. Well, they made another one called Welcome to Raccoon City, which followed the games. F well, you know, followed the. Uh, it was fine. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it might be terrible, but I think I enjoyed it for how terrible it was. Yeah, I didn't think I was watched those. I think I saw like reviews and was like, yeah, I'll, I'll skip this. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't say I blame you to be honest. Yeah, I've got one on Blu-ray, like a CG one. Um, that's a oh, they're good. Re regeneration. They're, they're, them ones are good. Yeah, it's Stars... the live-action ones that are terrible. Yeah, I think that Stars Clay. I remember it being pretty good. It's got on Blu-ray. The, there's um, a new one of them coming out, and there's a series on Netflix. Uh, oh, yeah. of, um A CG series on Netflix. Oh, that's cool. That's supposed to be quite good. Uh, that I haven't had a chance to watch yet, but it's supposed to be good. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. So we're an hour in. I said we'd get to an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We haven't even spoke about wrestling yet. Oh uh, yeah, I've got wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> We've had such a great time talking about nothing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. People, at, people at home are going to be listening to this, thinking, "I've, I've, this is how I'm spending my time." <laughs> like we're doing anything right now. We're here listening to these idiots. Yeah, <laughs> talking about literally nothing. Yeah, just having a conversation. Yeah, you're welcome. Listen, these are the best podcasts, though. Yeah, I agree. I've said it so many times. You're going to learn nothing from us. But you're going to have a good time. We are not your source of news. No. Yes, exactly. But you're going to have a good time. Yeah, there's thousands of podcasts out there. You talk about the news and things, which yeah. is fine. But we're hey, never that. Do you what you got to do, man. Yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll at least give you a good time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we're like a cheap hooker. <laughs> sure. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not the best. Well, we'll, sh we'll show you a good time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the name of this podcast, Cheap Poker. Cheap Poker. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, QT Marshall sucks. Uh, um, I'm all, I really like Powerhouse Hobbs, right? Yeah, it's good. And, you know, the, um, the Book of Hobbs stuff I thought was really good. 
um, leading to him sort of coming back to into AEW and stuff um, after being away for a bit or whatever. But to put him with QT Marshall after just having him win the TNT Championship for me is um, a bit of a step backwards, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't understand QT Marshall's appeal. I know he's a heel, and you're not supposed to like him, but he's, he's just not a very good heel either. He's just not very good. Just not very good. Yeah. <laughs> like like you said it. in our Discord, that he looks like a contestant on Bullseye. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He but just, you're right. He's like wearing like a button up all the time and just looks like a bloke. Yeah, you know, he just looks like a a regular man. Some guy, yeah. Yeah. Like, so you don't, you know, calling him QT Marshall does not make him any better. Marshall, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't. It still sucks. So now they're doing this like TMZ type thing where mm. they all sit around a room and it's rubbish. Yeah, it's not. It's There's not... so much good stuff on AEW at the minute, and that is literally. I, I you know, I, I saw it. I'm like, I will not watch another QTV segment because that sucks. Yeah, people watch AEW to get away from that rubbish. You know, they want to watch actual wrestling, not that stuff. Whatever that was. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It was bad. That's what it was. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it shouldn't last long. I hope it doesn't last long. Yeah. Because I think Hobbs, as a standalone competitor, deserves better. Yeah, agreed. Than to be hanging around with QT Marshall and Aaron Solo and uh, that blonde chick. I can't remember her name. Danny Alexo. Is it her? Is it? I'm not sure. Can't remember. She, I think she's friends with like Shotzi and Scarlett. Okay. In real life, and they do stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, Powerhouse Hobbs doesn't need to be doing stuff like this. Yeah. I used to hate the name Powerhouse Hobbs as well, but now I think it's great. Yeah, it's good. It's good on me. Yeah. It just suits him. It does. It's very wrestling. It's very true, yeah. It's very old school wrestling. But this QTV stuff, yeah, that's the sort of stuff that WWE used to get slated for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this it, it's terrible, so stop it. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> you know? wor- it's worse than when WWE did it <laughs> somehow. Like like you got Miss yeah. TV, but at least Miss Miz is entertaining in his own way. Uh QC yeah. just isn't. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like he only works there because of Cody as well. That's a good point. Wasn't he Cody? Which, yeah, he's one of Cody's mates, isn't he? Or yeah, friends of a friend were, or something did, like that. It's stuff like the night in the Nightmare Factory. Yeah. Like the training thing that they have. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's one of Cody's buddies. Hmm. It could be why. Yeah, but just fuck him off. <laughs> yeah. Because he's not there anymore, so who cares? Yeah, just do nothing with him. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's so many yeah good people in the back, not being used or not being used well, or just stuck on dark forever. Use them. Yeah, you got all this TV time. Yeah, they're way better. Yeah, I mean, th- this sort of stuff is not what we expected when AEW started. Yeah, like this sort of segment. Exactly. But this is easily that's easily the worst thing about AEW at the minute. That. Agreed. Yeah, we want just want just wrestling. It's good wrestling. The- yeah, because everything else is great. Like, I love the trio stuff at the minute. It's so good. Yeah, it's been great. Love MJF. I mean, yep, the, the bar mitzvah stuff was a bit daft at the beginning of Dynamite this week. Yeah. And that opening promo where they all seem to, like, bury AEW doesn't really make any sense to me. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, They've got to do better with that. Yeah, but at least MJF is an entertaining person. Oh, Whatever, oh, even even if he's given oh, rubbish to work with, he still makes it work because he's MJF. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope I hope they go somewhere with the four pillars of AEW thing. Like, because uh, obviously at the beginning of Dynamite this week, you had MJF and Jungle Boy and Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen. <clears throat> yeah, and I hope they go somewhere with it. It's just whether they do or not. Okay. I hope they do, because that, be that's cool. that's what I want to see. Yeah, same here. But I don't want to see QT Marshall on my TV. Nah, but cool to see Ty Valkyrie in AEW. Yep. Very cool. Good to hear. I like her. I hope that... For me, Ty Valkyrie is legit somebody who who seems like a genuine competitor for Jay Cargill. Yeah, very true, actually. Yeah, good point. He seems up to that standard. Because, you know, she looks, you know she looks it's alright throwing people like Sky Blue in there with her, but what's the point? <laughs> yeah. No, she looks, she looks the part. Just the same sort of, you know, 
that's the same aura as Jay Cargill. It's not yeah, like it's a, a similar build as well. You know, <laughs> they're both sort of. Uh, yeah, they're, they're both. Quite, they're, I'm trying to think of the correct term to say here without upsetting people. <laughs> the people, the people that get upset don't listen to this podcast. They're both clearly. jacked. Um, they're both jacked. There you go. They're both. <laughs> they're both absolutely jacked. That's, yeah. and they are. So yeah, I think Ty is a good, a good pick. I mean, I really like Jade. I still think she's green as shit. She's a superstar. Yeah, she but got... she's green as shit still. Yeah, and she looks. Yeah, I say looks incredible. If she went to WWE and spent some time in the performance center, maybe that'd be really good. If she wants to go there one uh, day, um... <laughs> I, I could see it, but but I do... I, she she definitely needs a lot of work. I mean, she looks the part. She really, she just has that presence about her where it screams superstar. Yeah, just yeah, it looks incredible. I'd like her a lot as well, but. If she's given the right person to work with, she can have some good matches. I think Ty Valkyrie is a good person to have in there with Jade. I think so, yeah. Because I, I watch her, I watch her matches at the minute. I'm like, <laughs> I look at just some of the stuff that, like, you know, she's missing moves and, you know, like missing strikes and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But the character gets her through. You know, the look gets her through. Oh yeah. But I would imagine it's only going to fly for so long. Yeah. I like her. You know, I'm not going to sit here and slate her because I like her, but um, I I think in ring she still has a, a long way to go before. Um, yeah, I just think she has a long way to go in general. Yeah, I think once the streak ends and she loses the title, I think it's time for her to maybe go away for a little bit, get some training. Yeah. Spend some time, you know, just to get more experience. Spend some time with QT Marshall. Um <laughs> In a training set. Hey, look, there's no doubt that QT Marshall is a fundamentally a good wrestler. Sure. Yeah. So just have him do that. Have him train people. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Have yeah. him train Jay Cargo. I think she's been working with uh, Brian Danielson a lot as well. Oh, really? Well, that's good. Yeah. So she, she, you know, she, she will get better. It's natural that she'll get better. Yeah. And she's just a natural talent, a natural athlete. She's got a great presence. She can talk. Um, she's a superstar. She but really she just needs to work on the, the in ring side of things. Yeah. No, she, she has all the potential in the world. I'm sure she'll do well. Oh, for she sure, ends up. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of awesome. Um, Jeff Jarrett, I thought, was great on Dynamite this week. Yeah, we still got it. Wrestling for the uh, the newly renamed International Championship. Yeah, was it before All Atlantic we, Championship or something? Yeah, which I, you know, which, which was fine, but I prefer yeah. the International Championship. Yeah, makes more sense. I, I think. think it just sounds better. Yeah, and yeah, it does. It makes more sense because you're not restricted then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nothing's thing's funny that the international championship is being fought over by Americans only so far. <laughs> <laughs> just American. Just, yeah. The all American championship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically just the United States championship. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but overall, I've been really enjoying AEW these last couple of weeks. I think in ring, it's been superb. Truly superb. Yep. Um, I feel like they're in a bit of a state of flux at the minute with, you know, you know what happens with the elite. Uh, what happens with FTR, you know, with contracts and stuff coming up. Uh, but I, I think, you know, AEW will be fine regardless of where people go. Yeah, absolutely. There's always going to be um, indie wrestlers about, you know. Of course there is. I, I fully expect, I fully, I do fully expect Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks to turn up in WWE eventually. Yeah. I think FTR will eventually end up back in WWE at some point. Yeah. Whether it's in April or whether it's because their contracts are up in April, and apparently, according to Dax's social media, they've decided what they're doing, but they're going to unveil in the next couple of weeks. Mm, interesting. Um, but you know, even if I can say a lot of back and forth going, some people will go to WWE, but some people will leave WWE and go to AEW. You know? It's never going to be yeah. short of never, never going to be short of people either company. So no, and we say it all the time. It's just good that there's places for people to work yeah exactly where's adam cole gone he was like on tv declaring his return a couple of weeks back and i haven't seen him since yeah i think i'm doing some like reality tv thing with adam cole and Britt baker 
Did they announced uh, yeah, that. Yeah, so AW All Access or something. Something like that. Yeah, which is fine, but yeah, sure. Bring Adam Cole back. I know the dude well. was injured. I just want to sit him back in the ring. Yeah, yeah. it's good to know he's better because it sounded like he was having a rough time with it. Um, For sure, yeah. Concussions aren't fun, from the sounds of it. But I, I want to, I want to see him back wrestling. I want to see too. him back doing what he does best. I like his, I like his theme song. Me you too. know it's all about the bone. I've been listening to um, Kenny Omega's entrance theme. That's really good. It's, 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 like some, it's so good. So good. It's like something out of Devil May Cry. It's so freaking good. It is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've got awesome. got... It sounds great in headphones as well. It sounds so good. Oh yeah. I've got like a big massive list of songs on my playlist. Like, like a big good chunk of it's wrestling stuff. The other good chunk is video game stuff. And the other chunk is stuff I grew up with, like Lincoln Park and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. See if I can find it. Let's see. Oops. No, go away. Spotify. Um, so, yeah. Kenny Omega. Um, I've got Baron Corbin's old song on there. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Good one, yeah. Yeah. With the words? Oh, yeah. With the words. Yeah. Um, that's all Persona stuff. That's all video game stuff. Persona 5 <laughs> has a banger of a soundtrack, though. Oh, yeah. Like, I've got so much Persona stuff on there. Episode of four, five, three, spin offs. So good. Sonic stuff on there. Live and learn. <laughs> nice. Um, Walking on the edge of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic Adventure had, like, the Sonic Adventure games had amazing songs. Yeah, it's <laughs> so freaking good. Shout out, shout out the Hedgehog opening theme song as well. It's so incredible. Shadow the Hedgehog? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, it's not I- a great game, though. Game's not very good. The uh, soundtrack, so good. It's called "I Am All of Me." Go check it out. It's so good. Um, mm. Rio Please new song is really good. Yes, it is. Uh, I like with the Judgment Day how they basically took their theme songs and just darkened them up a little bit. Yeah, healed healed them up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I, I like the fact they've all got their own one. It's not just, yeah. and then they've got another one for them as a group. I think that's yeah. very cool. Yeah, I think that's cool too. Um, Bray Wyatt's um, one is really good. Um, well, let's, what do you think about all this Bray Wyatt stuff? I don't know what to believe. Yeah, it's apparently he's got some sort of injury or something. Some sort of physical issue, as they call it. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Um, he started off so strong for Bray, with the White Rabbit stuff and the QR code stuff. And then just kind of, we're still waiting for something to happen. It's like, they keep teasing stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's died on its ass, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's something needs to happen. Come on. Um, yeah, I, I think they need to go back to basics with Bray. I, I genuinely preferred like Swamp Bray from <laughs> the NXT days when he was just like a weird preacher guy. Yeah, that was really good. Um, and he was just a badass in the ring, very sort of hard-hitting type competitor. And then I, the spooky stuff does absolutely nothing for me. I have to be honest. I mean, yeah. the Uncle Howdy stuff... Uh, yeah, I think it's cool. It has like this. He's asking about the Wyatt Six, whatever that means. If they had the faction of six people, that could be cool. Um, like both houses, obviously. Yeah, but it's 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 the it's the getting there. That's the big thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, with Wyatt. it's like like Alexa Bliss had the, the thing going on, but that never went anywhere. Um, yeah, now she hasn't been on TV in weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's like something's missing. Like, I want to, yeah. give him, want to give him a chance. Like, I don't want to write him off yet. It's not been that long. But something needs to happen. Come on. I yeah. like I like Bo Dallas. I'll go howdy. But I like the new mask. Not not big fan of the Bo Selector mask. But uh, <laughs> these other ones uh, pretty it good. Was like a, it was like a Bo Selector mask, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. The spooky stuff, it's just sort of does nothing for me and everything just takes so long yeah. to get anywhere it's like tonight we're here from bray wyatt it's like yeah great bray wyatt's gonna say a bunch of stuff that means absolutely nothing they say hello i'm bray wyatt bye yeah. <laughs> when <laughs> i was away man and all this sort of stuff and it's like okay then what <laughs> he, oh he, the segment's over great yeah who you gonna fight who's what match you're gonna have oh nothing okay cool yeah <laughs> great yeah can't wait for your next mountain dew match <laughs> I mean that sucked as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Also, he got taken off that house show. It was supposed to be a lights out match with LA Knight. It never happened, which is weird. I don't know. Yeah. 
I just don't get it. I hope that they figure it out because I do genuinely like Bray Wyatt and I think he's a really good wrestler. Yeah. But I feel like you just need to go back to basics with it. The spooky stuff has lost everybody already. All people care about is him having a cool entrance and then doing cool stuff in the ring. Yeah. I need to get rid of the Firefly, Firefly for now stuff. It was cool with yeah. the Fiend and stuff, but this is I mean, just scrap all that and start, start fresh. This is something new. Get rid of the Firefly, yeah. Firefly for now stuff. Leave Alexa out of it. She's had her time. Let Alexa go back to what she was doing before the Burn House stuff. Yeah. And just start, start afresh, you know? Yeah, I agree. It's uh, I just like I, I hope they do figure it out. I hope they do work it out for him. But we'll see. I guess we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Edge versus uh, Finn Balor would be cool. Hell in oh, a yeah. cell. That's gonna be awesome. I think yeah. I feel like I think I saw like years ago. I think Edge saying if he ever gets back in the ring, he wants to fight Finn Balor's like one of the one guys he wants to fight. Um, mm. So that's good. That's finally happening. Hell in a cell. It's going to be great. Glad it's actually on yeah. a WrestleMania, not just on its own, its own pay per view. Um, yeah. Which is very cool. No doubt it's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, Judgment just, just Day in general has been really good. I like him a lot. So good. Yeah. yeah. I, I, You know, I, I think it's given Dominic Mysterio a, a lease of life that he needed desperately. Oh, yeah. Big time. It's more of a character. Got way more charisma as you had before, which was zero charisma. <laughs> he attacks his dad at the Hall of Fame though, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Big time. And that'll convince... Nasty. And that'll be what tips Bray over the edge and then he'll agree to the match at Mania. And then he'll lose and then pass, you know, he'll probably retire or go and work part-time schedule or something. And Dominic yeah. will be the, the main Mysterio, I guess, going forwards. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And I've got no problem with uh, with Dominic, like, as he is now. Yeah, no, I like him. I think he's, he's a lot better. His in-ring is fine. Yeah. And I think while he's sort of got the protection of sort of Judgment Day and that around him, I think it it, it works perfectly. You know, it, you know, it it protects his shortcomings, mm. um, but it it also elevates the stuff that he is good at. So, it's a win win for Dominic Mysterio being part of the Judgment Day. I think. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, so Cody and Roman is on night two of WrestleMania. That was confirmed by Cody, seemingly on Raw. Nice, very cool. Which is which which is the right way to do it. Yeah, that's the that's the main main event. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's is, the one everyone's yeah. waiting for. Yeah, um, it's if Roman's going to lose the belt, plural, <laughs> which he, I, uh, you know, he should. Yeah, then that's the time to do it. Absolutely. And then we had uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens reuniting finally on SmackDown. Yep. That was Although very... it looks like that's not going to be the main event of Night One. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Hopefully, because well, they, they said it's going to be Rhea Ripley and Charlotte. And, well, at least that's the rumor. Yeah, I can see it maybe being the opening match of Night Two. So you have the Usos lose at the start. And then they won't be able to come down and help Roman because they have her or something during the main event. And that's what costs mm. Roman. Something like that. Me personally, I think it should be the main event of night one. Yeah, I agree. I don't care enough about Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte for it to be the main event. Yeah. I, I understand why they would want to put it as the main event. But in my opinion, the Bloodline stuff has been so good, like next level good. Yeah. That I think that that should it deserves to be the main event of night one agree that's just a reaction Sammy and Owens got on Smackdown when they finally you know, hugged in the ring and when, yeah. when Jay turned on Sammy that time <laughs> it's just a huge one of the biggest reactions in recent wrestling oh god it, of course it's easily the best you know, thing in wrestling that, right now I know that Charlotte and Rhea had a, a, a decent brawl on Smackdown yeah but you know it, they deserve it. They des, you know, the Usos, Sammy and Kevin Owens. They deserve to have this story finish at WrestleMania in the main event. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Just like Romans, just like the whole Bloodline thing needs to come down properly at WrestleMania. Yeah, and then you build Maybe. a new era from the night after WrestleMania yeah. when Jay White comes out and challenges Cody Rhodes for the world title. <laughs> that'd be cool actually yeah I'd be okay with that uh, I th I do think what happens the night after Wrestlemania is Cody separates the titles yep that makes sense it, we've had you know it's been cool having Roman 
being like the dominant double champ, but it is time yeah. now to split them up. Have, have, have to go back to the two the two champs, the two world champs. Yeah, uh, and I think, that, I think that's absolutely the correct way to go. Yeah, I agree. Um, because I think it's probably too much for the champion to work both shows all the time. Yeah. So I, I think personally, yeah, split the championships. Cody keeps the 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 WWE Championship, and then the Universal Champion goes to SmackDown, and they have a tournament for it. Maybe even King of the Ring. Yeah, that'd be good actually. Yeah, if we win, wins the King of the Ring, wins the, the champion. Universal Championship. Mm. That'd be cool. Yeah. So maybe do that, but I see. I, I think that's what will happen. I think they'll separate the titles again. Yeah, I think so. And like I said on the podcast before, the you know, Cody's got that sort of um, about him enough uh, in the, on the mic where it's sort of believable. Like I came here to become the WWE champion. Now I am the WWE undisputed Universal champion. But you know, SmackDown deserves a champion. You know, something. You know, words to that effect. Yeah, I know what I mean. It's very, it's a very Cody esque promo. Yes, for sure. Yeah. He'll he'll do some crying or whatever, and then uh, <laughs> have a cry. Yeah, <laughs> one of the belts will maybe give one of the belts to to Triple H or whoever Adam Pearce. Yeah, and uh, then they'll they'll figure it out from there. But yeah, WrestleMania is shaping up nice though. I mean, Gunther, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre will be a, a banger. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'd be a hard hitting match for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, that, that's going to be awesome. I don't want Gunther to lose the championship. No. I just don't. I don't think he will. I Although, it. I, do, I do think Sheamus possibly deserves a run with it. Maybe. It's the only one he hasn't had, isn't it, Sheamus? Cause, and he's been awesome as well. He has been good. And yeah, you're right. It's the only one he hasn't had. Yeah. Man, but, Gunther's you know, so good, that said, if they're going to separate the world championships, then Gunther potentially assuring to win the Universal Championship. True, true. That'd be cool as well. Um, one, a part of me did want to have like a, a six-way ladder match because they had that battle royale. I was like, maybe if it ends in some sort of no contest, they can have a ladder match at WrestleMania, like like uh, Sheamus, McIntyre, Xavier Woods, um, whoever else, LA Knight maybe. Whoever else in yeah. that match, I don't remember. But uh, LA Knight will do something at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, you're building you're building him up for something. Even if, even if it is to get his ass kicked by Stone Cold on the night or something. <laughs> That'd be cool, yeah. <laughs> Bit of what and yeah, back and forth on the mic and then Stone Cold drops in with a stunner. That's a cool moment for anyone. Yeah. There's a thing on the Up, Up, Down, Down, actually. It's like the uh, launch event for 2K23 and Stone Cold randomly pops up on there and says yeah. to telling stories as he always does. And yeah, Stone Cold's great. He doesn't just Stone Cold talk about anything. He's just one of those people. All his voices. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Stone Cold's absolutely awesome. He's got some great stories too. That's why I always loved his podcast. Yeah. Same. So good. Yeah. <clears throat> so good. But yeah, WrestleMania is looking to be looking looking like it's going to be really good. I'm excited to do pre shows for both nights. Yep. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that's going to be really really cool. Uh, we will definitely stream some 2K23 at some point as well. Yeah. Definitely. In the build up to the big event. It's yeah. going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. It's, uh, But, you know, and also I am excited for the night after WrestleMania, like the Monday after WrestleMania, because I think there is a lot of uncertainty um, surrounding people and their contracts and bollocks at the minute. So, <laughs> you know, would I, I, do I expect Jay White to turn up in WWE? Yeah, I do. Same. And the night after WrestleMania has been the perfect time to debut. Yeah. What maybe. he does, I don't know. I mean, maybe go after Finn Balor or something. I don't know. Ooh, that could be fun. Yeah, but either way, that. there's a lot of... I, I love this time of year. I, lo- I love WrestleMania season. I love sort of the uncertainty of the, the night after. It's very, very exciting. and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. Yeah, same. It's going to be good. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> um yeah, we hope you've enjoyed this hour and 25 minutes almost of <laughs> nothing. Pretty much. Uh, but I've had a blast, to be honest. Me and too. the time has flown, which, you know, is a good thing when you've got an hour and a half of this. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks for listening. If you're still there. 
<laughs> switched off after about five minutes when they realized that we were going to be talking about absolutely jack shit <laughs> when i say like at the beginning of the podcast when i'm like oh we were like have we got anything to talk about this week and i was like oh no that's when people turned off <laughs> yeah, pretty but much. hopefully they, they stuck around to us reacting to the resident evil video yeah that's so good so <laughs> good it's so bad also but it's so, so good so bad is good yeah we should do that on on the podcast on a regular basis. React to shit stuff from <laughs> back in the day. We should actually, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, just like fun. Or like, if if you guys listening know of something that you remember that's so shit gaming wise back in the day, whether it's like a trailer or something like that, tell us, and then we can react to it on the podcast. That could be something fun. Yeah, <laughs> let us know. Like a new little segment. Yeah, that'd be good actually. I remember this from back in the day. No, we'll check it out and then we'll react to it. Yeah. I oh, remember the um I wish I can't remember which game it was, one a WE game where like they would randomly cut a promo before a match or something, like live action. Oh Warzone. Uh, Warzone, yeah, that's it. I think like one of them was like yeah, it was during the Yeah, it was during the arcade mode. Oh yeah, that was it. Uh we should play some of them next time maybe. Yeah, the Ahmed <laughs> Johnson one is unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, so good. This is talk gibberish. You can't understand him. Yeah, absolute <laughs> shit. It's so good. But yeah, yeah we'll we'll do that next time. We'll yeah. pull up some of the uh, the things from WWF. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We it's should awesome. do um, the screen from Nitro as well. WWF, WCW Nitro game where you could press square on the character selection screen and they'd cut like a little promo. Oh, I didn't see that. That'd be cool. Yeah, it sucks so bad. But <laughs> we should definitely do that. Nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Anyway, this has been episode 171 of the Games and Grats podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash games. Raps. Go check out Added Time. Go check out Finn Steel. Go check out the Clubhouse. And we'll be back next week for episode 172. Yeah. My name is Sinergy, and I've been here with Finn Steel. And we'll see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. What random garbage that was. <laughs> <laughs>